Hey you guys, good to see you as always here on Grassroots Garden. And I was sitting in there at my computer just a while ago. It was so beautiful outside. I said, I've got to get outside. So I walked around for just a little bit. I said, you know what? Let me just go grab the GoPro and hang out with my YouTube buddies. The yard is just going off. There's stuff blooming everywhere. Pollinators are pollinating. So I think we'll just walk around this morning and look at some really cool stuff that's just in full bloom right now. So I came out, watered my greenhouse. Look at what opened up last night. So this is Plumeria. It's a tropical, but look at that gorgeous flower. Got that nice yellow center to it. Bunches of bunches of buds coming off. And we still got this bean, if you remember in a video I showed you in the past. So evidently one of the flowers got pollinated. It's got this funky looking bean coming off of it. That's almost like a split bean. One goes this way and one goes that way. Hopefully it'll, it'll dry here soon. We can get some seeds out of it and experimenting germinating this plant. The red moon is continually, it's always showing out. Look at that awesome, almost half moon leaf. There's a little speck of red right there if you can see it. But this plant has just uh, really blown me away. Looks like we had a slug get on our leaf and mess it up. But other than that, man, just a really cool plant. We've got, oh, hey, check this out. Let's walk around this way. I see a Cattleya that has bloomed and I didn't even see it while ago when I was watering. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? These are some of my favorite orchids. And again, we're going to have to put some slug uh, insecticide out here because he got on that bloom. Dug a little, cut a little hole right there. But man, I just love that purple against that light, light white. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I picked up this little rat tail Racktail cactus, I think it was called. See, I'm, of course, I've lost my tag already. But he just has these little rat tails that hang down. Cool looking little dude. We have got stuff just uh, everywhere. We gotta get out here, and I know I say it every video, and I've been working on getting some things down to the garden center for sale and just for display. So we're slowly cleaning out our greenhouse, but it's looking pretty dang good out here. It was super hot, but we had to get our cooling pad working just the other day. And I'm very, <laughs> oh, I'm very, I'm very sorry to say. You remember last year when I did that live? I was trying to catch this night blooming cactus in full bloom. Well, while I was gone, I had to take a little business trip. It bloomed again. I came back and the bloom's probably down there on the floor somewhere. So we missed it again this year, you guys. I have to wait all the way until next year. But here's a kind of a neat example. This leaf got torn some kind of way. Look at the roots that are coming off of it. So you can just rip leaves off of this thing, stick it down in dirt and make whole new uh, night blooming cactuses. Oh, I wish I had all day to spend out here. So much stuff needs repotting. Man, look at the leaf size on this variegated money tree. And look at some of the variegation on some of the younger leaves, all that white. That is cool, man. I've slowly been moving some stuff out to the patio too. This one usually lives out on the patio. I just haven't taken it around there just yet. We're gonna walk around to the patio area here in just a minute and all around the yard and see what's happening. And if you remember this crazy funky looking begonia, I think it's Melanobulata. Yeah, Melanobulata that I ordered. Had that real crazy looking leaf to it. It's doing real well. We gotta propagate this guy soon too so we can sell him down at the garden center this is a cooling pad i was telling you guys about so this is just a homemade cooling pad i did buy the actual pads i got them from a local chicken house supplier so they use them to keep the chickens cool in those big old houses but i just bought a couple pads took a big pvc pipe cut it up there cut it up there got just a regular five gallon bucket on a float switch and we just pump the water up it's on a little timer right here but that helps keep this greenhouse much cooler because last week, man, it was hot as all get out. It was like 95 degrees, so it was close to 100 in here. I went ahead and moved the birds out into the aviary. Let's go check on these mean birds. Hey, mean birds. How are you mean birds doing today? Yes, I know you want to come bite me, but I'm not getting that close to you. So this is Kona for you guys who have not met Kona before. And his girlfriend, Millie, up there. And Kona is very protective of his girlfriend. And plus, he just he just simply hates me. So now he's showing me how he would bite my finger off if I were to get too close. But they're loving life out here in the aviary, or at least should be. 
Uh, I've got some citrus, hardy citrus planted out here. In fact, I'll show you guys when we go back through the greenhouse, this uh, Pro Sim Quad over here, it fruited, if you saw that video back there in the fall. And it's got some nice blooms on it now and some, some small fruit. So I took and germinated the seeds from this. This is a really complicated triple cross hybrid type thing, but it lives out here in South Carolina all winter long. It made it through all the coldest winters, even two years ago. Has these little bitty fruits on it. You can eat them whole. They're kind of sour, but I really like them. And we're gonna walk around here in a second and look at this Vitex tree. The amount of pollinators on that thing is absolutely insane. Right here we have um, kind of a rare ginkgo. It's more of a horizontal growing one. It has these really funky looking deep lobed cut leaves. But ginkgo and citrus are non-toxic. So that's why I planted a bunch of non-toxic kind of plants out here in the slab. So hopefully one day they'll get big, go all the way up to the roof of this thing. And the birds can kind of climb around them and just have a more, more natural kind of environment for them. And if they would fly, they could fly around here too. Now Larry, when I had Larry in here, he would fly from side to side. We might need to bring him here and let him get a little flight exercise, don't you think? So let me show you guys these little seedlings over here of the Persimquat. They're popping up good. I didn't get great germination out of them. Let's see, I planted one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, six. I planted 30 seeds it looks like we got one two three only four out of 30 so not great germination success but at least they're growing uh oh the sprinklers are on so we might have to come back to this area ah heck with it let's just run through it really nice hydrangea here all of our hanging baskets are doing really well let's run our fire glow japanese maples coming on real good i fertilized all of Every, actually, the whole daggum yard not too long ago with some slow-release fertilizer. Fig trees doing good. Let's check on the bees. I bet you they are working today. Oh, yeah. This is one of the uh, swarms that we've caught. They've been working up a storm. I put another box on them. They've got it all filled up. We won't get any honey from this one this year because they're going to need whatever honey they store up to help them make it through the winter. And I see the raccoon has been in the trash again. These raccoons are driving me absolutely nuts. They open the trash can, pull out whatever they want, and just make a doggone mess. But one thing I gotta show you guys, look at this Vitex. So I did a video on this one a few years back when it was much, much smaller. Probably not planted in the exact right location because it's getting pretty daggum big. But I'm gonna tell you one thing, the pollinators absolutely go nuts for this tree there must be right now i don't know a hundred bumblebees just flying all over this thing the honeybees have been on it too and it'll flower for quite some time but it's just a really incredible little small tree but you do have to be careful again because it gets pretty wide she's at every bit of almost 20 feet wide right now by 15 feet tall even got some red wasp on it but the bumblebees especially and the butterflies and all kind of other wasps that I don't even know the names of. Just really, really enjoy this thing. Let's keep walking around this way and see what we can find, you guys. We got some Mexican petunias. This is another cool perennial. It can kind of spread on you, though. This was just a little bitty old clump last year. But it's got nice purple flowers all summer long starting about now now all the way until the end of summer but a really cool little perennial well i say little be careful where you plant this one because it can creep on you we've got a hibiscus man look at the size of these blooms look at the number of blooms on this thing this is the big dinner plate hibiscus machuetos i believe is the latin name for this one but ginormous i think pink or either red flowers on this one and I've got another new beehive over here. We caught another swarm here recently. These are the blueberry bushes we planted last winter. Now this guy, he just went ahead and aborted all of his fruit. And here's why I think he did it. So sometimes, you know, you gotta imagine these plants are sitting down at my nursery getting watered three times a day. They're happy in their little pots, getting fertilizer. And then all of a sudden we transplant them and they go through a little bit of shock and the plants gotta make a decision. It's okay, do we produce fruit this year or hey, we're not super happy we're not confident in our spot 
let's just take care of our roots let's just make sure we stay alive i think that's what happened here so this guy he just uh you know he was doing the right thing you got to kind of think like a plant he was doing the right thing and he says all right let's just focus on getting ourselves established so sometimes you may not get a crazy harvest the first year especially with fruit trees this little guy over here this was his first year so he did okay we pruned them back pretty hard during the winter too but these guys over here look these guys have been in the ground for about three years now look at the berries on this thing i mean it's just loaded down i'm sure the birds have been eating some of them and i've been eating some of them too as i walk around the yard but they're super big berries and very sweet they're just absolutely delicious that's one of my favorite things about growing my own food i know it's not been sprayed with insecticide and stuff just tastes better when you grow it yourself <laughs> look at this one over here holy cow we're gonna have us some blueberry pancakes oh who knows what we could make with these things but this one has done really well it probably could use a little bit more sun getting kind of shaded out by this oak but man look at all the ones that are ripe and ready to go the gardenias are still blooming their heads off the only negative about gardenias people don't realize when the flower comes out it's beautiful and white like this one here but then in just a few days they kind of turn brown look a little dingy but the fragrance coming from these things is well worth it and our contorted japanese maples that we did last winter they're coming along good i moved them a little bit uh, not too long ago to keep the wire from going into the actual bark this one i got him just kind of going all over the place this one i'm going to take and bend him up and then just kind of spiral him around here's a few of the variegated hibiscus that i brought from the greenhouse out here on the porch but sitting out here in my swing in the evening times just looking out over the pond and trying to dodge mosquitoes this trumpet vine is still going crazy crazier i need to get out here and prune this thing our beans are doing really well in our little raised bed Look at those beautiful little beans up in there they should start actually producing beans here soon and then next week the raccoons <laughs> if y'all saw the last video have just jacked my garlic all up and Luis pulled a hose pipe across them too so they have really suffered we're going to pull them up i don't know what the bulbs are going to look like we're going to pull those up next week we got squash coming on this is our rise and shine squash we really need to put a stake in there this one's supposed to be staked up tomatoes hanging off we just got so much stuff to do but there's just not enough time you guys the agapanthus that i showed y'all that was unopened last video has opened up isn't that beautiful got our drift roses blooming over there we've got some more agapanthus some cone flower opening up our uh, coffee cups called a coming through oh man i just want to get out here and go swimming in the pool let's walk down here real quick and look at this salvia i think this is the rock and fuchsia from proven winners look at that dude i didn't know they would get this tall but that thing is uh getting on up close to three foot tall let's go walk around this way y'all i want to show you hydrangea hill and then also some other hibiscus that are blooming our muscadine vine i gotta say is doing way better since we got rid of that old bradford pear that you guys saw a few weeks back it's getting a lot more light it's got some little grapes hanging from it everywhere so hopefully we may even have enough to make us some wine off of this coming fall but well, check out hydrangea hill <laughs> we've got these big old mop heads i think these are nico nico blues and then this is a ruby slippers oak leaf hydrangea that has just really impressed me this whole early summer usually they'll flower a little bit later but this thing has just really been putting on a show the pollinators have been all over that budlia this morning so my office is right there through that window so I can kind of look out here and I'll watch all the bees. And then I saw that really cool uh, hummingbird moth out here. So that's why I grabbed the camera. I said, I got to go outside. We've got some lace cap hydrangeas mixed in with the mop heads. Budley is shooting up. I just, y'all know me. I just plant stuff every which way. But then I call this hydrangea hill for obvious reasons. But this is what I really wanted to show you guys. So this is Rose of Sharon. Uh, Hibiscus syriacus, I believe and uh, this is two plants two one's a double bloomer we'll go look closer in a second and then this one is a single bloomer and this bee 
Let me extend you guys out. Look how covered in pollen he is. That's pretty funny. Those little guys are just absolutely covered in pollen, man. They are loving it. But I think this one's called Raspberry Beret. And then I've got a double bloomer right here. You can see the uh, difference in the flower, how many more petals there are versus that guy. I shouldn't have planted these two so close together. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest. But it's kind of cool. It gives a lot of color here in the uh, month of June and July. And a red hot, red hot poker, which is one of my favorite plants, Nipophia. It's blooming right here. It's just such a cool, unusual looking flower. This is another really good perennial. I like to plant them in groups, even though I just have a single one here for some reason. Again, I don't know why. I just bring home stuff and throw it in the ground. But I like to do them in, in, in mass. They just look so cool, those really bright orange flowers. And our rose bush that we tried to kill, well, we didn't do such a good job at killing it but at least it's a lot more manageable you remember this thing was like covered the whole wall over here definitely planted in the wrong spot that's why when we pruned it i said i don't really care if it dies or not it did not die it's still going strong another big gardenia i wish you guys could smell it right now it smells amazing you gotta love summertime and it's a beautiful day to be out in the yard beautiful day to be alive i certainly do appreciate you guys, all your support for the channel. Got some cool content coming up for you. Always remember, the more you know, the more you grow. I'll see you on the next video.